cyber security is no longer a top concern just for financial services, but it's a concern for across industries. Uh, since 2013, we've seen so many high profile cases where uh, customer data, credit card data have been compromised. So it's no longer a question of if uh, we would be attacked. It's more a question about when we would be attacked and how financial services institutions should deal with it. Today, to talk to us uh, about cybersecurity in detail, we have with us a security expert, uh, Colin McKinty, who is the vice president of uh, cybersecurity strategy with BAE Systems. I know that cyber threats are different for different financial institutions according to size and business, but if you had to generalize, what are the top threats? the cyber th threats that institutions are facing? Sure. So as you pointed out, the, the number of and types of threats are, are wide and, and varied, um, whether it's a phishing attack, uh, a whaling attack, DDoS, or the threat from insiders or hacktivists. I think the, really the key concern, particularly with financial services, is to understand the motivation. And over 90% of cyber crime is actually financially motivated, and that's really key. That's not only about going in through cyber IT means and actually mm -hmm. conducting fraud, but also taking information that can actually be monetized. Organizations like banks um, store a lot of information, credit cards, as you would expect, but also personal information about their customers. The interesting fact is that credit cards are worth so much on the black market, but actually personal information is worth more. And the reason for that is, is that we stop our credit cards very quickly yeah. when we know it's been stolen, but we can't change our name, our date of birth, or our social security number. So that information is really valuable to attackers because they can continue to use that um, to, to conduct frauds and, and steal identities. I think that makes complete sense. That's why we are calling data to be the treasure tro trove Absolutely. that our organizations have today. And it's like their most priced possession. Absolutely. I agree completely. Yeah. So uh, now that we know about the threats and we've been seeing them, in the industry, uh, you know, like uh, data is being stolen. So how do organizations deal with this? What are the new and upcoming technologies that, uh, you know, these large financial, large to small financial institutions should have in place? The key thing is to really not build walls. You know, the, the approach of in years past where we built these defenses high and we, and we hid behind them, a, a fortress approach just doesn't work. Our attackers we know are very varied, are very agile, very skillful. You know, it's a cyber crime is a business. You know, they're working on goals and objectives. Um, they have large teams, a lot of resources. And if they really want to get into an organization, whether it's large or small, they're going to find a way in. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that's the end of the game. It doesn't mean the CISO, the Chief Information Security Officer, is going to lose their job. How they're measured these days is how they quickly they detect that something has breached your defenses and how you respond. So it's about detection and response is key. The detection side is a new class of analytics that is coming about. So previously, we've, looked, we've used rules and signatures. A lot of attacks are, are unknown. So rules and signatures no longer work. Mm -hmm. What we have to do, and what organizations are moving towards this, is to look for the behaviors. You know, our attackers still have to do things. You know, they have to go in and they have to infiltrate the organization. They have to set up command and control. They have to navigate around the network. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, they have to exfiltrate, exfiltrate data. There's underlying things that they have to do. So what we need to do is have a class of analytics that leverage all this large volume of data out there to look for those underlying behaviors. They can't be brittle. They're not looking for the one-off case. And they're looking for the general case. They're generally across a large time, so this is where the big data element uh, c comes okay. into it. And they're a general thing that we're looking for in the data. This is really surprising that we're using behavioral analytics now to uh, cyber something like cybersecurity, and we're going to analyze behaviors of these hackers. Absolutely. I think this is uh, this is one of the most intriguing use cases I've ever heard of behavioral analytics. It's, I'm glad, you know, for me it's a really exciting space, you know, yes. uh, and it's a really important way for us to fight back. We know, as you said at the beginning, there have been a large number of attacks across a, a broad range of different organizations, but we do have a way to fight back, and behavioral-based analytics is one of those. You touched on a really interesting point about that well, we have to understand our attackers. Yes. Um, so one of the key things there is threat intelligence. There's an mm -hmm. awful lot of effort now, and a lot of financial services organizations are beginning to stand up their own capabilities or, or leverage external third mm -hmm. parties to get a better understanding of these attack groups. There are a lot of companies that are collecting that information. We can boil all of that down, begin to understand our attackers, uh -huh. understand the motivations, the tools, the tactics, and the procedures that they use, and ultimately the behaviors. When we understand that, 
we can write the analytics, we can find it in the data and we can detect them as quickly as possible. With behavioral analytics, I think institutions can become much more proactive in their approach to dealing with cyber threats. Am I correct in saying that? Absolutely. The uh, ultimate goal would be to be predictive. Yeah. That's extremely hard. But what we absolutely want to be able to do is if someone is inside your network, okay. we want to be able to find that behavior, that generic case. Another thing, Colin, you touched on detection and response. Yes. So I understand the detection part with behavioral analytics. Sure. So what what's the response strategy that a financial institution should have in place? Absolutely. No. So detection is the first part. What we need <coughs> to be able to do then is respond because detection has only given you an indication that something's going on. Mm -hmm. The response is really, really key and you can get it wrong. It doesn't mean you know, response is not the right approach to response is not quickly reacting necessarily. You need to get a complete view of what's going on before you actually react because if you don't you might uh, inadvertently tip off the attackers that you've discovered them. They might have some form of malware in your network that you're not aware of uh, at that point in time and they might leverage that um, realizing that they're soon to be shut down completely. Mm -hmm. So you need to get this complete view of what's going on inside your network, understand the attack and the breach completely before, before you respond. And when you do respond then you need to obviously respond in a timely manner with firm action. And that's more than just an IT thing. And so obviously a business thing as well. So it's communicating the, the, the issues that have been found out to customers, um, to PR and, and, and the wider community as well. Oh, this is all part of a, res a response plan. And I think for organizations, you need to be absolutely prepared. You're not working on your response plan once you've found a, a breach. Yes. You need to have a response plan ready to go. Yes. And again, having a document isn't just the end point either. You actually have to test it. So tabletop exercises, doing a dry run, a what if scenario, okay. and trialing it. Because that's the point when you iron out any kinks. Um, you realize that one person's on holiday. They were key and fundamental to the plan. Yes. What do you do when that person's on holiday? So it's not just about having a plan, it's also about testing that plan so that when you come to use it, you know it's going to work. Perfect. I think this is so interesting right? and it's about a topic that's like such a big concern for everybody. This is Colin McKinty, Vice President of Cybersecurity Strategy with BAE Systems. I'm Shagun Bali, an analyst with the FinTech Practice at Tab Group. Thank you so much for watching.